volunteers, somebody else that's not a kid, to come up to the front. <laughs> Melissa, come on up. Yep. Of course. I of course. <laughs> All right. What you're going to be is you're going to be Jesus for me. I need to come stand over here. All right. So Melissa's representing Jesus today. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm representing the devil. We're going to play red light, green light. Have you guys ever played? Red light, green light? Okay. So, Jesus is over here telling you guys, green light. Go ahead, tell Green light. Now, wouldn't it be so easy if we could just green light right over to God? Wouldn't that be awesome? Doesn't always happen that way, though. All right, kids, jump on back. <laughs> now you saw how they came over they were waiting for somebody to do something to them they were going real slow like really being gingerly about it alright guys hurry 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 Jesus said green light you guys gotta go that is silly that is silly isn't it buddy <laughs> alright everybody head back what we're showing is when Jesus says green light you want to run to him you want to run as fast as you can, get to Jesus, let's do this, right? The boy ran along. So I'm the devil. Jesus, say green light. Red light. Oh. What happened? Devil screamed red light and everybody had to stop. Because the devil is just taking over this guy and taking over this one and stopping them from going to Jesus, right? Because the devil does that sometimes. Sorry, <laughs> Sabbath school. Man, we missed out on Sabbath school. 
Maybe I didn't get up in time. Maybe I didn't wake up fast enough and get ready. It's really hard whenever we got some teaching here and we just got to grow these kids, right? But we know stuff happens. We understand. But that little bit of part of you got a hold of you and didn't get you where God wanted you to be for the day. Okay? So we're going to turn to 1 Timothy 5, 14 through 15. All right, 14 through 15. So I counsel younger widows to marry, to have children, to manage their homes, and to give enemy no opportunity for slander. Some have, in fact, already turned away to follow Satan. So guys, when Jesus says, green light, I need a couple of you guys to head down that way. Because... The devil is asking you to come down this way. Okay? So, Jesus. Red light. Come to me. Come to me, some people. Come to me. I've got candy. No. I've got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's essentially what we want to do, but it gets hard to separate yourself. Like, it gets hard to keep that eye on for Jesus. All right, everybody go back. Oh. <laughs> Timothy 2:25 through 26. Okay. Those who oppose him must gently instruct and hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth. Did Rachel have some knowledge right there? No, I'm not going to go follow you. That's right. And that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. Melissa's like, I can't be able to stand here her whole sermon. If you want to have a seat, honey, you can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what that's telling us is there's going to be traps of the devil. He's going to try and get you guys to stop following the Jesus. Stop being that green light, right? You guys won't see it if the devil's over here going, no, stop. Because... You can't see it if you're not looking for Jesus really strong, stronghold, right? How are we growing in the Lord? What happens to us if we're yellow lights? So Jesus is down here, and she's going, green light. Come on down. Yellow light. Yellow, 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 yellow. So yellow. <laughs> what happens when we're yellow? We're going pretty slow, right? Let's turn to Revelations 3.15 and 16. We'll talk about what happens to those yellow lights. Everybody head back. Yeah! <laughs> Your kids are going to take a nap this afternoon. <laughs> okay. Revelations 3, 15 and 16. I know your deeds that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Uh-oh. So devil's over here going, yellow light, yellow light. And that means you guys are going real slow. Not walking to the Lord as fast as you could. Trying to go with guidance, right? Is that kind of lukewarm? Not really going for the Lord as much as you should, but you're, I don't know, the devil's saying yellow light. I can't move. Is that what happens? really tough. Okay? So we count that yellow light as being lukewarm. Not quite heading to the Lord. Why would we let someone dictate red, yellow? We want to hear green all the time, right? So, I'm going to drop my little papers. So, we should always be that green light for God. We're going to turn to Psalms 119.32. All right, Psalms 119, verse 32. I run in the path of your commands. Key word, I run in the path of your commands. For you have set my heart free. These kids want to run for God. We, as adults, want to run for God. 
we go to feasts, we go to get-togethers here at the church, we go to um, roast beef dinners, we do all these things because we want to run for God, we want to run for God. Because that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be doing these things in his name. Let's also read Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. Do not run in church. Walk fast. <laughs> don't, we don't want anybody hurt. Don't want. Right, but but we we don't want anybody to get hurt. All right. So twenty eight says, "Do not, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow weary or tired." He will not grow weary, and his understandings no one can fathom. He gives us strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired. Hey, guys. Are you guys feeling a little tired? You ran a lot? See, Tiffany's over there going, yeah, I ran a lot. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. Rachel fell because she ran. Some people stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Hey, guys, go like this. You will soar on wings like eagles. You will walk and not grow faint. Okay? Pastor, I need you. Come on up. Head over to the kids. What I need you guys to do is you're going to stand in the center. I want everybody to lock arms. Pastor's in the center. You're facing me, Pastor. You're going to walk with them. You guys want to interlock arms with Pastor. Hold on to Pastor. Guess what? He's your shepherd, right? These kids are holding on because he's going to lead them to Christ. He's going to help and guide them. They might break. Their bond might not be as strong. See, Tiffany's only got like a tiny little wrist around them. She's not holding on. Oh, see? <laughs> she wasn't holding on real tight. Stuff happens. Things happen. Your pastor will be there to help and guide these kids. And help and guide you. But you got to make sure that you're holding on to him steadfast. We're going to read Acts 20 and 28. Keep holding there. Acts 20, 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he brought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will rise, arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning you of each... I never stop warning each of you day and night with tears. So, Pastor, is this person who's going to help these kids get over here to Jesus, right? And he's not going to let anybody come on over and take them. There's this devil going, hey. <laughs> but he's, he's helping. He's making sure that these kids are staying on that straight and narrow path to Jesus. We got to get them around church, get them into the word, get them listening to pastor and you as you preach the word to them and they understand it and it's written in their hearts. All right, kids, come on down. Jesus said green light. Look at that. They make it there. Head on back, everybody walk. Walk, walk, walk. Hey, get back here with the group. <laughs> Stay together. Come here. Stay no, no. together. Stop, stop. Come here. Come back here. See, what happened? Somebody was real eager. That's another part of the lesson. Somebody was real eager to run, run afar. I want to beat them. I want to get there fast. Hey, kids, the Bible says if God would be with us, nobody can stand against us. Nobody can stop us. So we stay together. We ask God to be with us. Now let's walk. Good job. <laughs> if you run too fast away from your pastor where he's not there to help and counsel and guide you somebody can come and snatch him up 
I could be standing over there when Kate ran real fast and snatch him right up and be like, oh, you're mine now. Pastor's not with you anymore. That's what happens when we play some games, right? We play, we play games all the time and like tag and all kinds of things and you're running, 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 trying to help somebody not get tagged. It's the same kind of thing. If you look at this game, red light, green light, we have this opportunity to be that green light, to stay with our pastor, have him lead and guide us and our children to Christ. But if we're running too fast and we're doing everything 100 miles an hour and pastor's going, wait guys, you just got to slow down just a little bit. You're not getting everything. You're not understanding everything. What's going to happen? They're going to burn up and burn out. We hear that so often. New guys come into the church all the time. Want to do everything close and close, fast for God. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And they burn up because they get too tired. Like Kate ran real fast. You're going to get tired. You need to stay in that line with the multitude of counselors to know exactly what you're doing as you're stepping because your person to the left and the right is doing the same thing as you being counseled by your pastor. Okay? Pastor's going to tell them, stop. Listen. Do not listen to those red and yellow lights. The red and yellow lights will stop you from your path. Will make you go slow. As pastor walks up with the kids, Jesus is over here saying green light. Devil's yelling red light, red light. Don't listen. Just keep going. Yellow light. Yellow light. I'm getting the evil eye from Rachel. <laughs> but that's the thing. These kids need that guidance. Need us to guide them. Parents to guide them. Pastor to guide them. If they don't have that person walking with them arm in arm, what's going to happen? There's going to be wolves around. People to take our children. We back off and go, you know what? They're, they got to make their own decisions. Our teenagers need to make their own decisions. They need to, need to be adults. I'm going to back off a little bit. I, I don't want to smother. What happens when we smother? They have a lot of issues because we aren't looking at it the right way. Remember the last lesson we had? We smothered to the point of them shooting out because they couldn't take it. You need to show in love what you want for them to do, what you want their path to be. Tell them they need to pray. You guys need to pray to God every day. What do you want me to do today, God? Lord, what do you want me to do to help you today? Brother Kenny said 10% of your day might need to be to God. Are you reading your Bibles? I know I'm not sometimes. Are you praying? Are you saying, you know what, I'm going to go out of my way today to make sure that I help this person over here. Do you guys do that? Do you guys see a friend crying in the corner and you just want to go over and console them or do you just go, oh, I don't want to deal with her problem? No. We want to make sure that we give a tenth of our day to the Lord. Whether it be praying a good percent of the day, whether it be reading your Bibles, helping somebody out, we want to make sure that we're leading ourselves that green light. If you're given that tenth, that would really show the devil that you are serious, that he can't take any of that from you. Pastor's here to guide your children. He's got them arm in arm. Are we allowing them to be here so they are arm in arm? Are we inviting them? Giving them the opportunity? Or are we just going, maybe I shouldn't tell them today to come to church. I, 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 don't, I don't want to. I, I, don't, I don't want to cause waves. I, I, don't, I don't want them to be mad at me because I suggested. That's not what God wants from you. God wants you to be that beacon, that person standing behind Jesus going, this is the one. This is your green light. You need to come. You need to see. And if you're not doing that, you're just as much responsible for their walk as the devil has taken them away. All right, kids, if you guys want to have a seat. We're going to read Hebrews 12, 1 through 4 to end it. Walk, walk, walk. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such great clouds of witnesses, 
Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run. Let us run. Maybe not in church, but in our hearts. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Make sure that if you're standing over here and you're getting told, green light, you're not looking right on what mom says. You're not looking left at what your friends say. You got your eyes fixed on Jesus and you're walking straight over. Okay? Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. He's the one who wrote this. He wrote us. He wrote the book. He wrote our lives. He knows what we're going to do. Let's not disappoint. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who, for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. <coughs> Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Pastors got your kids arm in arm, remember. They will not grow weary when they've got somebody walking beside them. How many times have we tried to do a diet? And it's really hard to do it on your own. You don't have somebody beside you going, are you supposed to be eating that cookie right now? <laughs> Pastor, you're not supposed to have those pies right now. <coughs> or somebody trying to slide him dance with candy when he's not supposed to have chocolate. The problem is you need somebody beside you, helping you through it, walking with you. Pastor's that person that's going to guide you. And Jesus in your heart, staying with you, taking those steps, just like on the beach. When he said about those steps, and why did you forsake me and leave me? It's because I carried you. He walked right with you and carried you whenever he needed to. Pastor will do the same thing. He will pick your kids up and pick you up when you need it. Help you carry these kids to get to that green light of Jesus. Keep that straight line without looking to the left and right. Any distractions. And when there are distractions and you're not sure if you should go left or right. Where's that counsel go? Straight to your pastor. Guess what? I've got an opportunity. I won't be here on Saturday. What do I do? Pastor, there's your guidance. He's there. He's got that direct conversation. He can help you through the path that you need to go to. Utilize your pastor. Utilize that prayer. Grab that Holy Spirit. Put it inside you. So you can utilize that and make that straight beeline for Jesus. Keep that green light going. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's what I have. I don't know what time it is. <laughs> That's